Brian, you are the co-founder at Red Light Rising, a supplier of red light therapy devices. So welcome to Modern Healthspan, and thank you so much for joining us today. You're absolutely welcome, and thank you so much for the invitation. You are welcome. So, you know, I think that red light is becoming more accepted as a therapy, uh, but truthfully, I do not understand it. And uh, so I, I suspect some of our audience don't as well. So it'd be great to get some kind of an introduction to it and how it works. So maybe you could start off with that. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. There's there's a lot to unpack there. So um, you are right that red light therapy is is really bursting into the mainstream now, which is fantastic to see because it's it's you know in my experience it truly can be a miracle um, supplement for a lot of people. So the way red light therapy works is that um, science. You know, some scientists kind of stumbled across red light therapy many decades ago, you know, five or six decades ago. They were trying some other experiments um, and they were shining a, a red laser onto a, a rat, unfortunately. Uh, and instead of, um, you know, harming the rat, which was what they were trying to do, they actually discovered that the injury that they'd given to the rat was healing a lot quicker than the rats that weren't getting the, the red laser treatment. So that's how they discovered, like, hang on. This red light is doing something very important to these cells. And then, you know, that that resulted in decades of, of further investigation. And where we found ourselves today is that we have um, a very clear understanding of what red and infrared light does to the body. It's not settled by any means because there's there's so many systemic benefits from red light therapy that we actually don't quite know why you know if you shine light on your face why does your wrist pain get better we kind of know what's happening but it's it's not cut and dry yet so far what we know is that the body is able to actually absorb this light so um, many you and many of your listeners might be aware that you know the body is actually light sensitive um, we react to the sun um, some people might have noticed that they react to very bright lights at night. It doesn't feel good. Perhaps they notice that they don't sleep well if they're you know, in, a, in a brightly lit environment for uh, too long in the evening. But what I'm saying is that the body is photosensitive. And what it's particularly um, good at is absorbing this red and near-infrared light. So when, when we hear about this term red light therapy you know whether it's in the news or if you're looking into studies or popular media they use that that term red light therapy but most often what's uh, being referred to is actually red and near infrared light they both have very very similar effects on the cells of the body uh, they just have effects at different depths mm -hmm. so the two most important biological reactions that are worth understanding when it comes to red light is the first thing that happens when the cells of the body absorb this light uh, this light can be used to increase cellular energy production inside the mitochondria inside the cells and cellular energy as you may be aware powers everything you know, you need the mitochondria in your cells to be creating this ATP, uh, the cellular energy. The cell has its energy to do its job, and therefore the tissue has more energy to do its job, and therefore uh, things function better. So that's the first important point, is that increase in cellular energy production. The second very important point is it also causes an increase in natural anti-inflammatories. So the light acts as a, a hormetic stressor. Now, what do we mean by hormetic stressor? Uh, in simple terms, it's, it's, it's micro doses of stress to the body that actually result in a, in a, in a benefit. So, you know, a simple um, example is um, strength training or, or weightlifting. You know, you lift the weights, you're actually stressing your muscles and you're stressing your bones, putting them under this, you know, exaggerated weight. But as a result, your muscles and your bones come back stronger to deal with that perceived stress. 
um, cold therapy, which is also very, very popular nowadays. People taking cold showers or swimming in the cold lake, swimming in the cold sea, getting into an ice bath. Uh, it's the same thing. It's it's a very temporary, very stressful situation for the cells of the body. But because it's temporary, the body is able to recover and come back stronger. This is very similar to what's happening with red light therapy. It's a micro stressor. It's stressing the cells very temporarily, very, you know, on a very micro, micro level. But then it causes the cells to release natural anti-inflammatories which go into the blood and then circulate around the body and decrease inflammation wherever it may be found in the body. Am I making sense so far? Yes. Yeah. So that, okay. So that's how it's working like systemically. So you said that you have infrared and near infrared. Uh, so what actual um, wavelengths are those and which one goes at the kind of the, the, the depth So what depths do they work at? Great question. So, um, what we've got is we've got red light, which is very obviously red. Um, if you've seen red light therapy anywhere, um, you know, it's, it's a very kind of um, attractive thing to look at if you're browsing social media because it's bright red and everybody's covered in bright red light. So that's the red light. Um, and the, the wavelength of red light is from around um, 613 nanometers, which is kind of like a dark orange all the way up to about 680, 690 nanometers, where it gets really dark and it starts going into, you know, like a purple almost. Uh, so that's the, that's the range of the red light. It's, it's, it's the 600 nanometers. Um, there's great benefits with 630 nanometers. There's uh, great benefits with 650, 660, 670. Uh, those tend to be the most studied or the most kind of highlighted in the literature. All of them show very, very similar benefits. So at this stage, it's impossible to say, oh, 630 is better for this. No, 660 is superior for that. It's, 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 you know, it's a little bit of a blur. All of them seem equally good right now. And then the other wavelength is the near-infrared wavelength. Now, this goes from around 800 to around 900 or a little bit more, 950 nanometers. And this is actually invisible light. So this is light you can't see to the, uh, it's not visible to the human eye. And a, a good rule of thumb is that the red light is mostly for the outside of the body. So it's the red light that benefits the skin. It's the red light that benefits the eyes. Um, it's the red light that benefits, you know, nicks and scrapes and bruises on the outside of the body. And it's the near infrared light that penetrates deeper into the body that um, we have we have found out, we've discovered, goes deep into the muscles, goes into the bones. It can go through the skull, into the brain, goes into the organs and, and, and everything on the inside of the body. Is there a particular group that's doing most of the study studies, like a specific scientific team who are doing most of the studies on red light, or is it kind of widespread? It's actually, it's a little bit of both. It's very, very widespread. We have a lot of great studies coming out of South America, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, um, and then a lot of stuff coming out of the States, of course. And the four, what's, who's known as the foremost expert uh, on what they call photobiomodulation. So that's, you know, using light to modulate biology, photobiomodulation. Um, is a gentleman called Michael Hamblin, which I believe he, he might actually, I think he's positioned at Stanford, although he is a British chap. Um, so he's, he's kind of known as the, the, the father of photobiomodulation. Uh, there's also a German chap uh, whose name um, does slip my mind, but he's also very clued up with lights. He's studying a lot. So it's very, very widespread. And then there's one or two figureheads that... Um, kind of brought it more into the mainstream as it were right so the people that we could look up great yeah absolutely okay thanks so we talked you know in general about the benefits right it, it helps the mitochondria and it, um, it elevates uh, antioxidants so but for specific requirements like you know i want to recover from exercise i want to fix a cut or so what kind of benefits would you see from red light therapy well um it, 
That, that's actually interesting because that's that's how I discovered red light therapy. I was, um, you know, on my own health journey. I've been very much into health for a very long time, and I was just reading and reading and reading. And when red light therapy started to, you know, tip over into the mainstream and it started appearing in the mainstream literature, um, I stumbled across it. And I was reading it, and I thought, "Wow, red light, oh, shining red lights on you seems so miraculous." You know, mm. sounds a bit weird. Uh, but I kept reading, and you know, once you read multiple studies and multiple articles and and multiple recommendations, um, I I was then curious. I was thought, "Okay, well, this is interesting. Like the science seems, you know, overwhelmingly positive and and showing overwhelming benefits. So now I'm ready to try it. You know, I've I've done you know a whole bunch of other." Uh, wellness um, adopted a bunch of other wellness habits up until that point and red light therapy was then you know fixed firmly in my radar but of course uh, getting hold of something in the UK you know five six years ago was was another challenge so long story short you know myself and my business partner we you know learned taught ourselves about it and cobbled together our first red light therapy device and started using it and at the time I was a carpenter so I, my hands just were constantly covered in scrapes and nicks and bruises and, you know, just the job itself full of splinters, you know. So my hands were, were rough and, and always inflamed and always in pain. And I kind of got used to living with that pain, you know, it's, it's part of the job, you know, and I, and I vaguely knew that if I, you know, if I cut my finger, okay, well, it's going to be sore for five days and then it's going to start healing up. But once I started using the red light therapy, you know, I was just using it on my face and my chest. You know, I didn't really know really how to use it back then. Um, but I noticed that the the cuts and the and the damage to my skin on my hands was healing a lot faster. Sometimes overnight. Sometimes overnight. It, it, I mean, obviously the cut would still be there, but the inflammation and the and the swelling and the pain had gone from the evening to waking up the next morning. You know, ten hours, the pain was gone. Um, and so I was absolutely blown away. You know, that that was my proof. And then that's when we decided, look, we should start a company because this this really works. Um, so, in, yeah, in the context of, you know, so when we speak to our clients and they ask us those questions, you know, I get those emails every day. Um, my eyes are poorly. How do I use red light for my eyes? Um, I've got severe joint pain. How do I use it for that? And in the briefest um, explanation, it's it's just to aim it at the pain. That's what we say to people. Aim at the pain. So, um, if it's joint pain, we recommend just shining the light directly on the painful area. It's going to increase blood flow in that area instantly. It's going to instantly increase the anti-inflammatories in that area. And most people will experience um, an instant sensation of you know less pain or no pain whatsoever, increased mobility and increased circulation. Um, so that's, that's very generally uh, for, for like acute treatments like that. If you say to me, um, workout recovery, then we start to discuss, okay, did you do legs today? Is it your quads that are hurting? Or were you, is it something else? You know, were you doing CrossFit, for example, and you're just exhausted from head to toe? Um, in that case, we say to people, for the best benefits um, for, for fitness and muscles and, and workout recovery, you need as big a panel as you can justifiably afford. And the reason why you want the bigger panel is because you get the you get a, a larger systemic benefit the more cells of your body that are able to absorb this light, because every cell that gets penetrated by this light will increase its energy production and increase its natural anti-inflammatories. So if you can cover more of your body, you just get more of those energy benefits and more of that anti-inflammatory benefits. So do you see that more elderly people uh, find benefit from red light therapy that would be perhaps different from, from these, these exercise benefits? Absolutely. I mean, as far as I'm aware right now, and um, my, my, probably my personal opinion is that there is no substitute for exercise. Hmm. Exercise, if you can, if you're mobile, if you're able lifting any form of weight whatever whatever it can be is is probably still number one you know along with diet and sleep but as a supplement you know i talk about red light therapy as a supplement because it, it doesn't it's inc incredibly useful 
but I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it will replace exercise. You know, I don't, I don't want to say something like that. It's not going to replace a bad diet. It's not going to replace bad sleep, but it's, in, it's an incredible supplement to, to actually right. aid all of the rest of those things. Um, and what I'm actually finding um, is that the older the person is and the, the more sickly or, or the less healthy they are, the more benefit they get from red light therapy. Because, of course, as we age or as we get sicker, what's actually happening on a cellular level is the mitochondrial energy is starting to slow down. So we're, we're literally running out of energy, and that's, and that's where the aging comes. That's why the skin sags. That's why the organs slow down. That's why the muscles start to disappear because of you know, that, that slowing down in mitochondrial energy. So it's, it's actually incredibly beneficial the older you are because it brings those things back to life almost. You know, it, It's not going to obviously reverse your aging or stop your aging, but it's going to increase your quality of life you know, it's in a in a very, very tangible way.